The General Appeal flagship LG G5 has fallen flat, and is hardly on the radar of those looking for a high-end phone. Interestingly enough, the V20 looks and feels effectively like a larger G5, though it retains many of the features and much of the V10's DNA. This combination of approaches makes the V20 dramatically more appealing to a wider range of potential customers, but at the same time works to differentiate by packing as many features and specs as possible into a single big phone, with two screens on the front, two cameras on the back, a removable battery, Android 7.0 Nugget running the show and a pile of content creation features, the V20 is quite a handful. The one area where the V20 doesn't differentiate from the V10 is in its sheer size. The one area where the V20 doesn't differentiate from the V10 is in its sheer size. The one area where the V20 doesn't differentiate from the V10 is in its sheer size. The one area where the V20 doesn't differentiate from the V10 is in its sheer size. Though it has trimmed down a bit in terms of weight, the V20 is still a massive phone. For a point of comparison, the V20 is actually larger in each dimension than the iPhone 7 Plus, which itself is also known for being a very large phone. At 159.7mm tall it's even a smidge taller than the huge Nexus 6 though thankfully a few millimeters narrower and thinner. LG is framing the launch of the V20 by the fact that it's the first phone to launch with Android 7.0 Nugget out of the box, and for all intents and purposes it succeeded in doing so. The phone launched in South Korea back at the end of September with the then latest version of the operating system mere days before Google unveiled the new Pixel and Pixel XL running Android 7.1, so, mission accomplished. Those of us buying in the US will technically be getting the second phone with Nugget preloaded, as the Pixels have already started shipping and the LG V20 doesn't arrive in US carrier stores until October 28. This issue was mostly created by LG's release cadence, where it takes nearly two months after announced to get a phone out and on sale in the US, but it doesn't seem too keen to change that right now. When it comes to performance, LG does a pretty good job keeping its software running quickly with the Snapdragon 820 processor and 4GB of RAM. For the most part everything was snappy and even heavy apps or multitasking weren't an issue. The LG V20's battery is removable and swappable for a fresh cell at any time, but that means that the battery itself is a tad smaller than you'd likely get if it were permanently embedded. 3200 mAh isn't that small. But given the fact that smaller phones like the Galaxy S7 Edge and Google Pixel XL managed to have 3600 and 3450 mAh batteries, respectively, it's clear there's a trade-off going on here. The V20's camera setup is something LG can be proud of, though it isn't materially different from what we saw several months ago with the G5. This is the same dual camera componentry bearing a 16MP sensor with a standard lens alongside an 8MP sensor with a wide-angle lens. You also get a hybrid autofocus system that combines laser, phase detect and contrast autofocusing to select the best one for the scene. 